A bicyclist, including the bike, weighs 650 newtons. Determine all unknowns. All right, so in this problem, we need to figure out the bicyclist's weight, how much weight is pulling down the hill, and how much weight is pulling into the hill. All right, so let's start by drawing our weight. Remember, the weight is going to act straight down. Even though the bicyclist is on a slanted uh, slope, make sure you draw the weight straight down. But what we're really interested later is how much of this weight is pulling down the hill. So this is going to be our new x direction. And how much weight is pulling perpendicular to that or into the hill. So that's going to be our new y direction. All right, so let me erase those. And then we're going to draw components on that weight that are along those axes. All right, so let's start by drawing straight down the hill. So I'm basically staying right next to the hill. We're going to draw a little weight right there. I'll show you why I drew it that long in just a second. And now we're going to draw a weight component perpendicular to that. So they, these two lines, they should make a right angle. All right, and they also, if I connected them all together, should pretty much make a rectangle, and mine was pretty close. All right. So then we see this little 14 degrees, which is our angle theta. That 14 degrees, you could prove, use geometry, or you can just notice that 14 degrees looks like it's going to fit right there. So that's going to be my angle theta, which means my weight is my hypotenuse. The real force is always the hypotenuse. This is my adjacent side because it's touching the angle, and this is my opposite side. A good way to remember that is that the downhill component is always going to be the opposite. So we're always, part of the weight's always going to be pulling downhill, and that's always going to be your opposite side. All right, so let's go ahead and fill out that 650 newtons. That just says it's the weight, so that's our first answer. Plus, I can put it on my hypotenuse. Now it's just regular trigonometry from there. So I know that O equals H sine theta. And I can go ahead and plug that in. I'm expecting to get a small answer because this is my shortest side when I made sure that they lined up correctly. Also, this is a relatively not, not very steep hill, 14 degrees. And so I got 157 newtons. So I should expect that there's going to be more force pulling you into the hill than pulling you down the hill, since it's a, the angle's less than 45 degrees. So the downhill weight component is 157 uh, newtons. That's going to go right here. All right, then to get A, I can do H cosine theta. And plugging that in, in my case, 650 cosine 14, I get 631 newtons which I feel pretty confident about because it's less than my hypotenuse, but significantly greater than my opposite side. So just a quick review, we are always going to draw one component down the hill, so parallel to the hill, and one component into the hill or perpendicular to the hill. If this angle is less than 45 degrees, then expect more of the, um, expect a larger adjacent side than opposite side. All right, let's take a look at another example. All right, so in this one we have a really steep hill. A rock climbing student weighs 650 newtons. Determine all unknowns. So once again, let's draw that weight straight down. Then my first step is I'm going to draw a downhill weight component perpendicular to the hill. Remember, I'm going to try to end up with something that where it looks like a rectangle. And I did a pretty solid job of that. But in this case, since that hill was so steep, it's my downhill weight component that's going to be the larger one. All right, let's label the sides. So the weight is the hypotenuse. This 70 degrees fits right there. This one's a little harder to see. So that's the adjacent side. And this is the opposite side, because once again, the downhill weight component is always the opposite side like we wrote down last time. This one, once again, gave me the weight. I think it was 650 newtons again. So that's my hypotenuse. But this time I'm going to use 70 degrees. 
So I'm going to use A equals H cosine theta. When I plug that in, I got 222. And that was the normal weight component. And then I can do O equals H sine theta. And plugging that one in, I got 611 newtons, keeping at least three significant figures. All right, so the difference in this one, we had such a steep angle that this downhill weight component was more. Remember, so the weight was closer to pointing. This one was closer to being 90 degrees. And so it was greater than 45, so we expect a larger downhill weight component than normal weight component. Let's take a look at one more problem where we kind of have a different given. In this one, it says a cart weighs 20 newtons. In order to achieve a certain acceleration, the cart must have a downhill weight component of 3 newtons. All right, so let's draw that weight straight down. Draw our downhill weight component following the hill, and our normal weight component perpendicular to that one we just drew, hoping we get a pretty good rectangle. And my downhill weight component was a little long, so let me shorten that, and then erase these extra lines. So a decent rectangle. All right, labeling those sides, the weight is the hypotenuse. The downhill is always O because this angle, would we can move it over to right there, making this the adjacent side. All right, now we got to be careful with our um, given on this one. So this one did not give us an angle. We've got to figure that out. All right, so it says um, 20 newtons was just the weight. So that can put go on the weight right here. This one gave us a downhill weight component of 3 newtons. So I can put that right there. And we need to figure out the adjacent side and the angle. All right, so in this case, I'm going to find the angle first. So to find my angle, actually, I'm going to find the adjacent. Um, excuse me. I'll, I'll find the, I'll, I will find the angle first. All right, so I know that sine of theta equals O over H. So inverting that gives me that theta equals the inverse sine of O divided by H. It's asking us for degrees, so make sure you are in your calculators in degree mode. When I plug in, I get 8.63. degrees for my angle theta. All right, and then to find the adjacent side, I have a couple options. I'm going to use, um, I like to use the things that were given directly to me, so I'm going to use a modified version of the Pythagorean theorem. And I can do h squared minus o squared, the square root of that equals a. So I'm plugging in square root 20 squared minus 3 squared. Gives me the square root of 391, which rounds to 19.8 newtons.